Hey, what's going on, people? Happy Friday. So glad everyone can come out and share a little time. Things are going faster than I expected because when I was putting this together, and if you're new, welcome to 30 days to 2500 bucks. Understand, this is day 11, and we have not one, but two people who've made the 2500 bucks already. Mr. 16,000, and I got an email this morning, $2,650. Understand, these people had businesses before. Uh, neither one of them started from scratch, but it just shows you the power of this course. And I am really, really just thrilled the way that this thing is going. And I am seriously thrilled. So, oops. And at the end, I'll let people know how to join because that seems to be a common question but with that it is 359 and getting back to starting early if you've been here before you know it's coming I need your word I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday day by day I will become the hustler I know I can be I am all in for those of you who are new this is conditioning your mindset this is making a new mindset this is creating your future because understand this, you cannot experience growth, change, and success by staying the same way that you currently are. That's not to say that the way that you are now is that you're a bad person. It's just if the way that you are now could get you what you wanted, you would have it. It's about systems, processes, and methodologies. And this is one of the ways to condition your mind because whether you put stuff in your mind or it passively enters your mind, your mind takes hold and uses that information. And there are many of you who have negative programming that just keeps success away from your doorstep. Now, this is something that your business does. And it's, it's, it's really your business is like a needy spouse at times, depending upon what type of business you have. You can uh, set up a business where it doesn't need you at all just depending on what it is there are certain businesses you can automate like say a car wash once you build it get it set up get the coin washers and stuff together uh, you can walk away and come back and collect money but typically if you're doing a digital business or you're doing some internet business this is something that's going to be a common theme in your life what have you done for me lately I was watching an interesting video about what Google has done by uh, getting him shout work. He does a lot of cool videos on YouTube and Google is coming back to content marketing. Essentially, just five years ago, you could put up blogs that were completely automated. Just put in a few keywords, throw some banners up there and you had people making six and seven figures doing that. Well, it was abused so much that now your stuff has to have relevant content. I mean, relevant content is just the price of admission. And it's really funny how we went forward to come back to what works. And I did that myself with YouTube and Facebook. I went away from it. I spent a lot of money doing social media, got the data, and the data said, fool, go back to doing what you were doing. So essentially, there are certain things that you just can't get around. There are no shortcuts. And your business, you're going to have to ask yourself, what have, what have you done for me lately? Uh, you, it's just a common, common question, which means you must embrace change. You must become very comfortable with change. This is a new habit that you must develop. And when I say pushing yourself, I'm not talking about you going up, getting up in the morning, putting on some track shoes and running five miles and you never ran five miles. I'm talking about if you get up in the morning, you have a 30 minute walk and it takes you to say two miles in 30 minutes. Well, you're going to walk for 32 minutes and then a week later, you're going to walk for 34 minutes and then a week later, you're going to walk for 36. So over a period of time, you're pushing yourself and you're growing and you're expanding your capabilities, but you're not killing yourself. When I was, because uh, I'm on a different workout program now, because actually I lost about 15 pounds recently, and I'm not lifting weights like I was. Actually, I took a break because I'm trying to slim down, and it's really, really 
interesting how I went from maybe deadlifting 275 to getting up to 600 by pushing myself every workout. But there's these little weights called fractional weights. It's um, one fourth of a pound, it's one half of a pound, one third of a pound, and one pound weights. You typically will not see them in any gym unless it's a seriously, seriously high tone gym. You squat 225, you may not be able to do 230, but you can do 225 and a half, and then you can do 226. Those little jumps with a program of consistency got me up to 600 pounds because I never stopped progressing. And that's what you can do with your business. Like when I say push yourself, you know, say this week your goal was to make 500 bucks. You, you crushed your goal. You crushed your goal. You made 550. All right. So next week your goal is to make 560. But you could te- you keep doing it because you see this in the gym. You see guys working out with the same weights for years and years and years. And then when someone that comes in with a good program, because if you have a good program, you can really is so crazy that a person with the proper training, proper diet, can look <clears throat> excuse me, look like one of those superhero bodybuilder people, depending upon their genetics, within a year to two years. Someone who doesn't have the proper framework can be in the gym six years and never even get close to their genetic potential. So it's really, really interesting that the, the, what consistent progression will do. And that's what I want you to think about for your business. Every month, you push a little bit. If you made 2500 you know, going for 5000 may be too much, but going for 3000 may be doable. And then next month, you go for 3200 If you just keep doing this, it's like writing a book. If you write 250 words a day, and you do it every day for a year, that's 90,000 words. That's a big book. Or that's two 45,000 word books. Or it's four novellas, like for romance. In a year, it's consistency. Consistency, 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 consistency. That's what that's what will get you where you want to be. So when, like I said, you know, I'm talking about push. I'm not talking about kill yourself. I'm not talking about set your life up where, I right, this is Sparta, and you know you're like chewing scorpions for breakfast, and you know kicking like in infidels that come to your village in the pit. No, I'm talking about daily consistency with an urge to progress as frequently as possible. If it's half an inch, if it's a centimeter, if it's if it's a quarter of an inch, that's progression. And you keep doing it, you'll get a foot. And then one day you'll look up and you've gone a mile. Three steps to growth. And this is a big one. Written goals. I'm going to say that three times. Written goals. Written goals. Written goals. A process and a deadline. If you want to make $100,000 Write it on a sheet of paper, then break it up, okay? That's going to be about 8600 a month, okay? So that's about 2200 a week, okay? Then you break it down to the day, and then when you, you get down to that level, it doesn't seem so huge. That's part of your process. Deadlines are super, super important. Have you ever noticed how if you have something that's coming but you're not ready how fast it comes that deadline it is super super important it is like lighting it is really pretty much lighting a fire under your hind parts to get you know just to make this thing real so you need all three of those things to grow your business personal life whatever you you need all three of those things (laughs) you thought i was getting soft right this is your One of your tasks of today, I want you to sell your significant other a cup. Doesn't matter what kind of cup, you go in the cabinet, you can find a fancy cup, you can find a plain cup. The price of the cup is $10. Now understand, the cup is bullshit. It's your pitch that matters. And you you tell them, hey, I'm taking this 30 days to $2,500 course, and my task tonight is to sell you this cup. 
and I, you before you approach them, you come up with a pitch. You know, go in your shelf, and it's like, okay, which cup? And you come up with a story, and it's like, okay, and this is what I want to sell to you. And if you don't have a significant other, a close friend, family member, because someone's like, I don't have a significant other, man. I can't do that. Yes, you can. If you have to go out and get your dog, and make like you know, pretend with your dog, do do what you have to do. But this is to get you in the habit of thinking how you're going to sell your items. Now, this stuff is for in-person sales. Okay, this is for in-person sales because you know we'll get to the online stuff a little later. But the deal is, do not forget that you need to learn how to sell to people face to face, connect, because. Once you get your salesman on or your saleswoman on, and understand, the best salespeople are not extroverts. They're actually moderate introverts because extroverts just can kind of, I worked with these guys and they were like, you know, as soon as the customer walks in, hey, this is Al, you're my, my BFF and all that BS. I noticed that the guys in the office that consistently made money were somewhat introverts. Guys that closed the door with an office... I had one of the top salesmen, he would just get wore out. He said, man, after a day of dealing with people, I just have to go home, pull down the blinds, and just sit in the dark to recharge. So if you're not like this extrovert person or you're not this uh, super salesy person, don't even worry about it. You can still become very good at sales and making money because if you score moderately on the introvert charge, you're right where you need to be. So... This is a wonderful way for you to learn how to sell. Now, face-to-face -face never goes out of style. Some beautiful things happen when you do in-person sales. Your confidence goes up and you develop a very, very awesome skill set. The ability to walk up to strangers and start conversations. I don't care where you are in the world. That's an awesome, awesome skill set to have. And, you know... We're, I've been all around the world, and people are people. I think one thing that has always surprised me was how friendly and how helpful people were around the world. If you're like in France, and it's like, I don't know where I'm going, and you talk to them, they, they'll help you. And you hear all this stuff like, oh, the French are this, this. If, it's been my experience. If you are a decent person and you're decent to these other people, 10 times out of 10 times, they're decent to you. But that's been my experience. Day 11, how to sell anything. That's the question that everyone wants to know. How do I sell anything? Well, guess what's on the agenda today? I'm going to tell you how to sell anything. The number one thing you have to do is love it. <laughs> if you love it, it's very easy to sell. It is incredibly easy to sell. It's really, really not a problem. Know it well and actually use it. This is the thing that got me. Well, sell cars. You can sell something that you don't like. And you can sell something that you're unfamiliar with if you have enough skills. Uh, I'm sorry. If you have enough sales skills. However, I've noticed that when you love it, know it well, and actually use it, the sell is so easy. When I was in the storage auction business, one of the reasons I could sell used stuff was I wore the used clothes, clothes. I had the furniture in my house. I was buying stuff and selling, you know, buying stuff off Craigslist, selling stuff on Craigslist. The things that I used, and I was very enthusiastic about it, as you know, having energy and enthusiasm. So it wasn't really like I was trying to snow them because I really, really believed in what I was doing. It's like, why go to the store and spend like 100 bucks for this shirt when, you know, I can buy a unit for 50 and get 100 shirts. That's happened. So when you are really embedded in what you sell, it's not even selling. It's just proclamation. And sell shit that you're passionate about. That's how to sell anything. <laughs> That's the secret. Those are the magic jelly beans. As you know, this is my dude, Earl Nightingale. And I'm going to get a little personal here. When I was introduced to Earl, I was at a low point in my life. Uh, 
got separated, was going through a divorce, the homelessness, living in the boarding house. That three-year period is about the middle of that three-year period is when I came across, the, yeah, Earl. And I listened, and I, the lessons didn't take the first time. It took about the 30th, you're listening to it around 30 times, and it was like, oh, Earl Nightingale helped me reprogram my mind. It gave me one ideal. And it was the ideal is what you think about is what you become. And I owned it and I kept thinking about it. And then I started using the principles from Earl Nightingale's course. I started to make changes. That was how I was able to figure out how to get a job that I <laughs> didn't have. I knew I could do it, but I didn't have a reference. I didn't have skills, but I got the job using these techniques. And what I want to tell you, if you get one thing out of this course that gives you lasting benefit, your time here was worth it because... When I was out shopping for products, services, things to help me improve myself, at one point I had a very, very messed up way of judging how what I should buy because I was looking for home, the home run effect. Spend five bucks and you know make five thousand, or spend a hundred bucks and make twenty million, or something like that. And then one day it dawned on me, if the stuff could do all that, it wouldn't be so cheap. And that's one of the things that we run into when we're looking for benefit because I'll give you the case of my first book. There was a guy that he sent me an email. It was a very torrid email. He was very, very unhappy with me. And it's like, it's just a book. It should be like 10 bucks, man. And I wrote him a 10 paragraph email. This is not a book. It's my life. It's what I did. I spent $695,000 getting this education that I'm putting in this book. And that's when the book went up to 99 bucks. I had a lot of people that were just like growling and barking and shit. And I, I held that price for about 18 months. And I was selling the PDF on my blog for 60 but there was one point there were more people who were buying them from Amazon because of the way the Amazon ecosystem works. So when you own your stuff, because like I said, he sent me this and I had to reframe his email. Sent him a 10 paragraph response saying what it was. And I, at the end, I put this is a selling system. If you buy this book and you utilize the principles, you will make the $99 back the first week, plus friends. And he shot me back another tort response, and I'm gonna buy your damn book. So he buys the book, and his first unit makes him five grand. And he, he just like, you know, this kind of taught me how to really look at stuff. And I'm telling you this because many of you are gonna create products, you're gonna create digital products, and people are going to question you on your price. When you know that what you're doing is true and it will work. Because the principles that I'm giving you in this course are the things that I use to this day. This is stuff I still do. This is stuff that I do it because it works. When any time I can put out a product in a day and make 80 bucks, that's a win. And for a lot of people like, oh, you just put out this brand new product and only made $80. That's not a lot. Of, that's just not worth my time. For me, it is because I can scale that because this, the things that I gave you in this course, it was validated. I put it out in one day, pre-sold it and made money. That says, OK, this can can work. Now, now it's time to tweak it and tweak it. So understand every day of this course has something pivotal in it that if you really work it, it will benefit you long term. And that goes part and parcel with how to sell your stuff. If you have products that you're not really excited about, my suggestion to you would be have a garage sale and blow it out. Get your money back, get what you can, and then go back out. Because like I said, this is day 11. All these exercises were designed to get you to a certain point. Because I used to 
sell the crap out of Herman Miller Aeron chairs. And one of the reasons is I love the chair. I knew how to make all of the modifications. I knew how to use all the knobs. I could sit a person down. I sold the CEO of a small company here in Atlanta, 50 of those chairs, and he wanted like chairs from Staples. Went to his office and took the chair with me. And that's another selling point. It's real easy to, it's hard to sell something they can't see, touch, or feel. So I took the chair with me and I put it in it. And I noticed he had poor posture. And I was like, uh, you have back pain, don't you? He said, you know, he wasn't a big guy. He just was kind of lanky. And I was like, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you a benefit of this chair that you did not know existed. And it's going to help you with your back pain. And he just kind of looked at his people like, sure. And what it was was the forward knee tilt mechanism. Like, you know, quick ergonomic chair lesson for you. When you tilt put the knee tilt uh, feature on what it does is it lowers your knees and raises your hind parts where your hind parts are higher while the top of your lap is higher than your knees and it forces you to sit a certain way so I put him in the chair put and left it with him all day left it with him all day put it in that, that position and it's like you work with this chair and then I raised up the armrest I did everything and I, I made sure that it was comfortable for him and the next morning I, I called him and I said so how did you like your chair and I, I didn't say at the chair or the, I said how did you like your chair and he's he, he was a little sheepish and he said last night was the first night I didn't have back pain in years in bed I'll take 50. So by knowing what you're selling and being passionate about it, you can turn people who are like, this guy was like going to go out and buy 50, 200 buck chairs. And he ended up buying 50, $1,000 chairs, 50 G's on chairs. And he put it on this American express, got crazy mad points. So this is the power of rethinking what you sell and how you sell. Like on day one, the cuddle girl, and there's a, I've checked, a lot of people are now trying to have cuddle businesses. I think a lot of that's undercover prostitution myself, but <laughs> the girl who did it first was passionate about it. She liked to do it, and it worked for her. So there's all types of businesses out there that you can do. And what many people ask me is like, well, how do you run your business, and what are your metrics? And that's not going to work for you unless you go through a crazy divorce, you end up homeless, you start 10 businesses, five which fail. Then you learn your, I mean, if you don't walk my path, you are not going to get the same benefits because each level of failure, I gained some insight. I learned something new and I kept on and I didn't stop. I just kept on. And one person asked me a long time ago, it's like, why didn't you never give up? I think, honestly, that if I gave up, I probably would have withered away and became a bitter, mean, evil person. There were so many dark days. There were so many crazy nights. And that's when I developed the theory of the big life. And the big life is... It's not your life right now. It's the big life that you can have. And it's not so much faith because there was a lot of action. Like if you're just sitting there going, oh, the big life, the big life, and you're not doing anything, it's a fantasy. It's a whim. But I was doing stuff and it wasn't working out. And I was like, okay, this didn't work. 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 This. Holy smoly. Holy shazam. This worked. And why did it work? Okay, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again. And it kept working because I had built up these experiences and trends where I was able to be effective. I just really could not give up because I, it would have invalidated everything that I went through. So when you're, there are many of you out there, you're frustrated. Um, you, you've been working on your businesses and things are just not going the way that you want. Don't give up. You may have to change up. You may have to get a job and work on your business on the side, but don't give up. Now, this is another part of day 11, how to sell anything. These are the no, no, no's. 
Never sell anything you would not buy or use. I would be a hell of a BMW automobile salesman because that's the last four vehicles I've had. I know it sounds strange and there will be people who will disagree with me because, well, I don't have to use this or that and I can sell it. And I would think you're going to be more effective if you really, really believe. One of the reasons that I put my courses out and you know, my hourly consulting fee is four fifty. I raised it. And for five years ago, it was thirty dollars, and I consistently raised it because I consistently added more value. I believe in me. I know that these techniques, methodologies, I know they work because they pay my bills. There's no more proof than that. When hey, it's time to pay my bills, and I go in my checking account, and there's money in there that came from these techniques. It's like validation every day of the week. So. Really start stepping your game up. Instead of going to bargain basement stuff, say you're a person that likes watches. You really love watches. Get yourself a job in the watch store and figure out a way to get used watches and flip them on your own website, eBay, do videos, watch groups. Do you. Figure out what your thing is because you're unique and you have some skill sets. And whenever I do consults, there's people who the big thing that I find is a lot of people do value certain attributes they have because they have them. And they see them every day and they're very pedestrian to them and they could be marvelous. They could be magnificent. But when you there, were there was partnerships that I could have got into early and I did not like the people. I know it's going to sound childish. And yes, I left money on the table, but I didn't like these people. That we're offering these partnerships. I there's a group of people on YouTube who are trying to partner with me right now. To last this time last year, they were in my ass. They were saying all kind of bad stuff, and to me, they are just like off limits forever. That is the beauty of having your own life. That's the beauty of living a life of intent and design. You don't have to entertain foolish people you don't want to entertain to get a buck. You don't. So. I have not made as much money as I could because I refuse to work with certain people. Refuse. It's just like, I don't like this person. I don't like the business. And there was not enough upside for me to sway me from going, okay, this is good business. Because I, I will say, if the data was there that was saying that this was going to be awesome, I may have changed my mind. But I didn't like the person, didn't like the business plan, and didn't want to be tied to them for any length of time. That's a beautiful place to be. Now, remember when you, you know, if the shirt I have on right now, which you can't see, I got out of a storage unit. And the uh, the pants I have on, I got out of a storage unit. Let me look. Uh, socks, no. Socks, I got new. But I'm very, very passionate about making as much money as you can and saving as much money as you can. Do both. Don't do one at the expense of the other. You know, if you want nice stuff, figure out how you can get it. But um, really, really think about that. Really, really think about that. Not selling stuff that you don't like or you would not use or you would not have in your house or you would not um, put on your children. Day 11, how to sell anything. If you notice, there's little asterisk marks keep going as we go down this. Sell what you know. You know something. You have expertise in something. There's something you know, and there's something you know very, very well. But think about this. What do you believe in? There's a guy, uh, Crowley, I think his name's Mark Crowley. He's an artist on YouTube. He does anime. He really believes in his art. He makes six figures from his YouTube channel because he just believes in that stuff, and he just teaches people how to draw. What do you believe in? Do not discount what you believe in. I don't care if your mama went, mm-hmm, and your daddy went, that's just foolish. Try it. See what it does. See where it takes you. And when you were going through this process, there will be a lot of stuff that you'll pass up. Every day I get emails from people who want to partner on YouTube, who want me to, you know, advertise their products on my channel I look at the product and I'm like I wouldn't buy that shit for myself and I know I know we live in that time where hey it's just money you know get the money when you can uh-uh 
if you see me sponsoring something on my channel, I know it, I like it. Like, I would do Netflix because I'm a Netflix fool. I would do a BMW sponsorship. I would do a Lamy pen or, or a, a Waterford pen sponsorship. These are things I use, I know, and I love. Because living a life of design and intent, you put stuff in your life that makes sense. You don't just have stuff in there to have stuff. If it doesn't make sense, it's not there, whether there's money attached to it or not. And this goes back to my video of mental money. I am not as fiscally well off as I was when I was in the store trucking business, but emotionally, spiritually, and the most important wealth, time. I am way richer, way richer. My time is you know, I do these presentations every day. Well, you know, it took some breaks, but I can after other than being here at 4 p.m. or if I've got a consult, I can do whatever I want with my day. Rearrange it, get up at five, work for four hours and I'm done. I work for six hours and I'm done. That that is intoxicating. That that is it is crazy to own your life. And I own my life completely and utterly and it's just i couldn't give this up i could not give this up would i ever get a job if they gave me the conditions where i can live my life this way sure i'll take the money if they give me that type of autonomy and freedom yeah i'll do it if no uh-uh wouldn't do it and i would make less money to keep this freedom because the ideals that come to you when you have time to sit back and let things just percolate or marinate is amazing. I get ideals every day. Now, let's talk about the context of selling. When I started with YouTube, it was help first and profit later. Going back to delayed gratification. I'm a hard salesperson. I'm always saying this is going on, this special is going on. That's pitching. I'm pitch, 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 pitch. Yep, pitch all day long. However, I have a YouTube channel that if you go through the videos and you get that knowledge, it will make you money and the only cost is your time. So the help is out there in abundance. Actually, I'm doing this course for free. If you were here between four and five, bam, there it is. And I know that I would profit massively later. It keeps happening. Uh, there are days that, you know, I'll have months, right? I'll just be, it's kind of crazy. Like the first part of the month may suck ass. I'm just like nothing's happening, nothing's selling. This is part of having the business. You will have cycles. Then the last week, I crush it. Or it may be a month where every day I'm selling something. But it keeps getting better and better and better because what did I say at the beginning of the video? Constant progression. I just said I put out a product, you know, and a lot of people would be like, you only made $80. I was thrilled because it's like, okay, this works. This works so I can scale this. If it didn't work, I would have to euthanize it. And this is a biggie. And this is a biggie. Some of you may have to have another business to get this kind of effect. But design your sales cycles for repeat sales. That was the epitome of what happened in the upscale garage sale. We had 300 people that came every weekend, rain and shine consistently, and rated that dollar session. We used to salt the dollar section. We used to put shit in there and it was like, let's see how long it take them to find it. We take some nice polo shirts and stuff and bury them at the bottom. And I guarantee you, there was like a group of Mexicans. They would find that shit and they'd come check out with it every time without fail. It got so bad, we started doing time. It's like we knew they were going to find it. It was a matter of like, uh, they're going to find it in an hour. No, 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 no. They're good. They're going to find it in 30 minutes. You can have fun with this stuff when you're looking at it from... A lifestyle perspective versus I got to get money perspective. I got to get money perspective is boring. It's dry. And it's stressful. You can make sales fun. And it gets better. This is you know, a lesson that if you get could change your life on all fronts. Many people pitch and pitch and present and pitch and present. You should qualify, present, close, close, close. Ask for the sale, ask for the money, ask, ask, ask. 
In the beginning, it's going to seem awkward. It's going to seem socially in, uh, unacceptable because the great thing is content selling or you just present and they go, Ooh, it's so nice. I got to want it. No. <laughs> Learn to ask for the sale because once you get comfortable asking people for the sell you're going to get comfortable meeting people you're going to get comfortable asking women out you're going to get comfortable asking for deals and discounts at stores this just changes so many things in your life by learning how to ask for the sale because we're taught that it's impolite and pushy to go ahead and say i just qualified you i just presented for you you didn't give me any objections i want your money Okay, you don't want to give me money now because you're unclear. Okay, what are you unclear on? Okay, well, oh, my bad. Well, this is how this works. Let me show you. Let me walk you through the literature. Are you ready by now? Nope. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. I wore a guy down one evening in three hours because we're in the conference room. Because see, I also had some knowledge that he didn't know that I had. I heard the last time I was there that he needed to get this done four weeks early. He wasn't going to let me know that. That's why, you know, I kept hammering because I knew he had a deadline. And I got close, close. And he said, okay, fine. This works. This price points. Let's do it. Signed off. Got the purchase order. And I was out of there. You, you have to get comfortable with that. I put up a video and I ask people to do stuff all the time. Take my uh, free audio book. Well, hey, if you want to be part of 30 days to $2,500, you need to get in today. Ask, ask, ask. Does this turn some people off? Yes, it does. It does. It turns a lot of people off. People are like, oh, he's just putting his hands in my pocket. What they're telling you is, I don't see the value of your offer, so I'm going to go away. Which means, hey, maybe I need to get better with my pitch. Maybe he's not the customer. There's a lot of variables. But I have enough fiscal validation to let me know that what I'm doing works and I'm going to keep doing it until it doesn't work. So get real comfortable asking people for stuff because it's going to be a part of the rest of your life. Now for another task, and this is a beauty. I want you to tell a story. I, I mean, the, the bigger, the better. I mean, just make up something crazy and get one of your friends or, you know, your significant other. And it's like, look, I want to tell you something. You can lie. Just make this outrageous lie up. It's still a story. And just tell them and have an offer with the story. Like, give you an example. Babu, what? I was at the store and this clerk comes over, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's like, this ain't legal. It sounds legal, but it sounds illegal, but it ain't. If you can come back with $500 and buy it in the store, I'll give you $3,000 worth of merchandise. I just need to get, you know, I got $450. I just need to get $50 from you. And you get to $50. And after that, it's like, I'm just kidding. I've just made this up because this is part of a course that I'm taking. And I have to do it. Then just give them their money back. Now, if you can convince someone to go for a WAS, a wild ass scheme like that or something like that, you're going to sharpen your sales skill. Because the thing is, it's presenting and it's a process. It's a modulation of your voice. It's paying attention to body language. This is stuff you will inherently pick up if you continue to go out and pitch people. You won't be aware because it's like last time I was in this situation and I saw that body signal. And your mind's just going to go boom, 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 boom. It's, it's not like you're going to be in a literal thought process. It's just going to your subconscious mind's going to go, oh, I know what that is. So it's going to it's like when you when a guy is like going for a slam. They don't think about slamming. They just head to the basket and it's bam, automatic if they have the skills. So this starts to kick in when you get your reps. Sorry, stale products. I had a day that I was lining up. This was when YouTube didn't let you schedule stuff. I loaded up 10 stories and I sold the most books I ever sold. And I saw the correlation. I was like, ooh, and that's why I start putting up video after video after video. And that kept my sales going because I wasn't saying, okay, this is Glendon. And this is how you go to a storage auction. No, this is Glendon. And this is the good shit I got from a storage auction. Or this is Glendon. How I lost $1,000 on some bullshit. Those things resonate with people. 
They really do. Um, stories are some of the best marketing there is. And there's some people that will go, oh, no, but look at the big brands. They tell you stories. Nike is wonderful at telling you a story in 30 seconds. Stories are powerful. Very powerful. Okay. So with that, we are going to get into the questions. <laughs> Richard, the bodybuilder, was hot <laughs> and strong, too. Aaron, I listened to Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field audiobook last night. It was brilliant. It's awesome stuff. El Eli, gosh, I'm glad you mentioned the guy drawing anime because I'm an artist myself and I've been depressed and doubting can I ever make any money on YouTube just because I don't know that many people who pay attention to art anymore. Everyone pays attention to art, Eli. The thing is, people don't want to pay for it because there's so much of it out there that is brilliant, that is just awesome, that you can get for free. It's like porn. I don't know how people are making uh, porn. Uh, Manny, let's film a BMW commercial with uh, some sick EDM, EDM in that line. You live the life you design for yourself. Toss it on YouTube and see what happens. <laughs> You're like the third person to talk about something like that. That's funny. Uh, this is Aaron. Glendon, I remember you saying you wouldn't invest in gold or silver because you said it would not be useful in a zombie apocalypse scenario like The Walking Dead. But I was talking about the hyperinflation, which you still not invest in. All right. Just between us, I got some gold. I got a bunch of it. I don't have to buy anymore. So my thing is, I look at in a hyperinflation situation that skills and people who can get things done or will always be valuable. Like, let, let's just say someone who can get bread and milk. Pimping bread and milk. That could be a serious occupation. Um, I'm not too worried. This is my thoughts. And this is just me. And this is how I live my financial life. If we get to the point where we have this crazy hyperinflation, we have many more problems. You you will have... Just, all right, let me put it to you like this. Okay, say we have hyperinflation. If you have a house that's paid off, a business that makes you money, and your health, you'll be okay. If you have a ton of gold and your health is deteriorating and you need a lot of people, you'll always be weak and at prey at the, uh, to be used by other people. Aaron, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I want you to understand something. Most of the people in the world are poor. 80% of the world lives under on, on less than 10 G's a year. 80%. So, there are people out there like, let's just take us as Americans. We're, we're extremely fortunate. And there are many people who are bitching about being in this country. Right now, in China, there's some little girl who's turned 14 and her daddy pimped her out and she's now a prostitute. Uh, there's some kid in India who's being sold out as a, also as a prostitute to feed the family. The, the things that we take for granted are so awesome and most of the world doesn't have it. And most of the world, violence against women, kids, and people, there's no recourse. There's no police. There's no, there's no court system. We are fantastically fortunate. And when I look at these people like, you know, Obama killed the country, the Republic... They don't have no idea what's out there. They really don't understand that we are lucky that for most of us that we can walk outside our house and not get shot or have to worry about a suicide bomber or have to worry about some government person saying, hey, you said something bad about the government and you're going to go to jail for 10 years. We are incredibly fortunate. Oh, great question, Richard. How did you train yourself to change your words so they do, they do not negatively influence your thoughts? It was a process. Whenever I was going to think of something jacked up, I would reverse. To this day, if I'm getting ready to say something mentally stupid, I will stop it. I will stop it. <laughs> it's, it's, it took a while to learn how to control my thoughts because the first thing that I did was write out my day. 
I would take in my journal and I was like, the day is going to happen like this. I'm going to have a good day at work. I'm going to sell a lot of phones. That was a good way of priming my mind for success. I stopped hanging around negative people, even if they were family members. Uh, my mother, I love her to death, but she's extremely negative. I don't visit her that often. For that reason, we've talked about it, but she's like, you know, I am who I am. I was like, okay, I'm trying to tell you something, but you ain't listening. It's hard when it's family, but you have to look at your life. And if you have all that negative energy, it's going to dampen your success. But the deal is practice thinking about what you want. Like one of the reasons I don't watch television is you're bombarded by a bunch of in, in, images and programming that could make you literally hate yourself. Oh, if you don't take this program, you're, you're too fat. If you don't do this, if you're not thin enough, you're ob I mean, there's so many negative things and it's part of marketing spend to make you buy products, but it's very harmful to your personal psyche. So filter out that stuff, you know, that's why I read more than I watch television because I can control that much more because you can sit and watch TV all day and you can just get hit with all these subliminal messages that would just totally screw you up. So eliminate TV or cut way back, read a lot of books and prime your thinking. Like if you're going on a sales call and instead of saying, well, I hope this works out, you sit up straight and it's like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to kill this. And you say it so much, so many times mentally that when you go in there, you kill it. And you just pro, you know, just things like that. Like we'll talk about that because we're going to talk about sales a lot more. A lot of crazy stuff that I would do. Uh, this is from Greg B. What's up, G? What do you think about people that say cold calling selling is dead? I think they're wrong. <laughs> I cold called a, a guy into a consult last month. I walked in, I talked to him because I actually knew him through another person. And I said, look, I think I have some service. Didn't know this guy and I just showed him my YouTube channel and he did it. So this goes back to what I was saying about in-person sales because that's, that's kind of like cold calling. It's not dead. Every 85% of business is still done off of the web. So cold, no, I think they're crazy or scared. Uh, let's see the book. This is from April. The book called the game penetrating the secret society of pickup artists. It's generally about picking up women, but the skills you can learn will help you as a salesperson. Very true. Very true. Cause you're pitching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably next week I do Monday through Friday and leave uh Saturday and Sunday out of the mix. Uh, Jelini, I started working with digital gold currencies in an online trading platform in 2004. The trading platform collapsed, but I realized I can apply my experience to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Mark my words, one of those cryptocurrencies is going to pop up. It's going to it's going to take fire. It's going to catch on. It's coming. Chris, I have a background in finance and the MBA. When you, but when you buy precious millers, the dealer will kill you on markup and commissions. Yeah, see, I got most of my gold and silver out of storage units, so it was a different ball game for me. Uh, this is a very good question from Jasmine. How do you know when to just walk away from a business versus just not giving up? First of all, um, if you haven't bought, you should buy, you should join the Facebook group. When you validate your business, and this is very important, and this is a great question, so thanks for asking. When you validate your business, it's working. When you validate your business 10 different times, 10 different ways, and you don't make any money, it's not working and you walk away. Because the whole thing about this course is for you to validate your business as fast as possible so you can get the information so you don't spend two or three years on it. So after you validate it, after you tried it, after you pitched it, and it's not working and people are not buying, it's either change the product or walk away. And it's not like you're giving up, you're moving on to something else. Uh, Aaron, I'm not American. I'm British and I lived and traveled to know about how bad the poverty of the rest of the planet is terrible. But I get that as capitalism. <laughs> I mean, when you travel, you see some crazy stuff. 
Uh, the Wang. Yep, people focus on some government idiot and blame them for their lack of mo uh, motivation. I ordered an item from a guy, and one of the things he said was his unemployment had run out, and it was because of the Republicans' fault. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the guy had people lining up to buy something he creates for the hobby world that he loves doing, and he's pissed about his unemployment running up, which is the reason he started building the item. I mean, people get locked in on crazy stuff. They really do. Um, Marcy. Glennon says, listening to you, I now check my accounts daily and review my statements, including PayPal, eBay. It's official. I'm being pimped by eBay, PayPal, Craigslist. Here I come. <laughs> Edward, when some weird or sick thoughts come, I visualize a wastebasket and drop the, the bad thought in it. Ed, that's real cool because sometimes I do that too. I used to do, um, I used to do mental paper. All right, this is exercise. It'll make more sense if I just tell it clean. I used to visualize, because that's real cool, because I used to do that. I don't have to do it anymore. But I used to mentally vision a desk, and I envisioned all the bullshit that was in my mind on the desk, and I would ball it up, and I would, you know, basketball it into a trash bag. And in the beginning, I was missing, <laughs> in my mind, I was missing the stuff. But as I got better, my thought process cleaned up considerably. Uh, Chris, about the economy. YouTube Mastery and Money, Stuart Wilde. It's about an hour and a half filmed in Australia in the 80s, but it's still relevant. Okay. David, hope is dangerous. It, it, it really is a dangerous word to have in your vocabulary. I actually don't use it other than use when I have to. Uh, hope, I'm going to try. Um, let's see what happens. All that stuff's pausing because you're giving yourself an out. That's a good point. Um, Darren, Glennon, I currently sell a little bit of everything, cars, furniture, electronics, antiques. Do you think it's best to generalize or specialize on one or two products? Mike, well, I'm going to throw that question back on you. Are you doing well selling all that stuff? Because everyone can't sell that many things. I've, in a year, I've sold everything you're talking about. It's really about your infrastructure and your process. If you're doing it well, if you're happy and you're making money, I don't see any problem with it. It kind of goes back to what do you want to do? I think I answered that. Princess, do you have any tips to describe hustling on a resume or in your LinkedIn page? Um, just put down I'm a hustler. If you try to clean it up, that means you think it's negative. And if you think it's negative, you shouldn't be doing it. Leslie, when you start thinking about trademarks, I kind of looked at it, but I'm not there yet. Uh, I think if you really have something killer and understand, understand trademarking something's crazy expensive. If um, you own it and you have a company name or something that will protect you, but talk to an attorney. I mean, I think you, for me, before I got to like trademarking like Nike or something, my business would have to just be blowing up. I mean, because of the money that it's going to cost to get all that stuff put together. Manny, what kind of product could I sell to go along with my DJ stuff besides T-shirts? Turntables, microphones, speakers. You can like, hey, this is Manny, and this is the setup that I use. And then you go to the manufacturer. Then you get sweet deals, and you wholesale that stuff to your other DJs. Meditation comes and gone. I mean, Aaron, I, when I'm like stressed every day, <laughs> when I'm not stressed every now and then, uh, writing is meditation for me. So you could say five days a week. Chris, damn you, Glendon. I can't still nail the imaginary diet. I've been working on it for a few weeks. I'm telling you, it's a trip. But Keep practicing, and then one day your hands would go together and you would go in the water. You are right now reprogramming your mind. You are reorganizing your thoughts for success, and your mind, is, believe it or not, since it's used to not doing that, is fighting you. It's a process. Been there. Okay, it's Friday. We are, it's 4.52, so I'm going to shut this puppy down. Nothing's happening tomorrow. If I do it Sunday, I'll send out an email and let people know. Uh, let's see, because I don't think I canceled those. But you'll get emails. I'll, I'll straighten that out. 
So let's see. Sure thing. All right. So I want to thanks everyone for coming out, sharing your Friday evening with me. And uh, this is Glendon, and I will see you on the good side.